Hey, Chirps, it's Roy from Geeks Adventures. Woohoo! Broadcasting from the soggy Clintonville section of Columbus, Ohio. So, Halloween approaches. Woo! Um, about two years ago, I did 2017, right around this time, I did a, um, I did a piece about, you know, off the wall Halloween y stuff. Um, I thought. Yeah, it's been two years. Let's do another one. So, um, picked a couple films that go beyond the usual Silence of the Lambs, Exorcist, Poltergeist, yada, yada, yada. Um, some things are more recent as well. Um, the PCAT, if you're looking for some stuff to watch on All Hallows Eve. So, where do we start? Actually, going to start with something for the kids. Yeah, a horror movie for kids. Monster House! Woo! Um, yeah, this is a little bit of an oldie. Um, this is actually from, by Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg were both involved in these. Um, it's an animated piece. Um, which animation house was involved in this anyway? Oh, this is with Sony. Sony and Columbia Pictures. Um, wow, amazing. Something that's not by, not done by DreamWorks or by Disney. Um, what well, the story, simple story, ba very basic story. Three friends, ta -da, um, decide to go into the house in the neighborhood. And, and the funny thing is, even in the 21st century, there always seems to be that one house where you just look at it and go, what the heck is up with that thing? And they go in and... It is haunted. <laughs> um, okay, and you're going, why the heck I want to show this to my kids, you jackass? Psh! Um, it is rated PG. It is PG, isn't it? Yeah, it is PG, okay? So, yes, it's creepy, but it's not... Ah! Well, you know, for most kids, it's not ah! scary, but... If you want a chance to, to introduce your kids to a, what a horror film can be, this is a good one. The scares are pretty basic and simple, although there is one with a house and a shadow that's reminiscent of, at least for me, reminded me of the notorious poltergeist scene with the tree. <laughs> that was really creepy as heck um, with the shadow from the house. Um, but other than that, the, 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 the scares are simple, really good, cool kid stuff, and a good kind of, you know, a little wee kind of thing to it. So, a lot of fun. Next one. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, done with the kids. Morgan! Um, this is a recent film. Um, kind of a, un a little bit of a take on, on Frankenstein in some ways. What happens when a bunch of scientists decide to genetically create the ultimate assassin? <laughs> Nothing wrong could happen, right? And of course, you have all these people sequestered in the middle of nowhere, blah, 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 blah. Morgan, raised from a child, trying to foster things that hypothetically are less psychotic, blah, blah, blah. And of course, everything goes wrong. Wow, imagine that. It's an all-star cast. Michelle Yeoh's in this. Toby Jones. Um, um, oh, gosh. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Paul Giamatti was brought in to analyze Morgan to see what's going on. <laughs> um, and Kate Mara, when, everything, when the crap hits the fan in more ways than one. Um, Kate Mara. That's Kate Mara, right? I'm sorry. It is Kate Mara, isn't it? Yes, Kate Mara, I'm sorry, um, is brought in by the agency who created Morgan to figure out what's going on and to clean up the mess. Um, I mean, it, it, it sounds like an in, obviously an insane plot. Uh, plot. It's like, duh, things are going to go wrong. Um, the fun part is, though, is that one and... Um, um, oh gosh, I'm sorry, my brain just kind of went blank here. Um, and Ann Taylor, who plays Morgan, um, she is wonderful because she walks this balance, obviously being psychotic, um, but still being an innocent, well, not quite innocent, but a child who's trying to figure out the world. 
Um, unfortunately, she doesn't have the time to learn fast enough because she was built to do other things besides be a functional adult. Um, which kind of breaks your heart, too, because all the other folks involved, you know, the, the range of reactions, of course, you have the folks who are like, she's a product, give me a break, to the ones who see her as a child and deserves a chance. Um, so it's really kind of cool. Next film, the film that made Vin Diesel a legend, Pitch Black. Um, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, when you think about it, it's a horror film. Um, and the way it starts, <laughs> it starts as, well, duh, it's a horror film, gets worse. Whole bunch of people just trying to, to, to get from one spot to another on a starship. And, of course, by bad luck, they're transporting Ving Diesel is this Hannibal? Is he Hannibal Lecter before Hannibal Lecter? Anyway, badass killer. Blah, 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 blah. Due to an accident, they crash land on a planet that appears to have some kind of station on it, but there's nobody around. <laughs> then they discover why. Apparently, the planet has one of those, has a funky little orbit, so that for half of its year, it is pitch black. Bum, bum, bum. Which, unfortunately, means something else besides is also living on the planet. Um, it's a lot of fun. You see the, right from, right from the onset, you see the amazing charisma that Vin Diesel has. Um, the, the fun, actually, the other fun part is, is that you know, he, he, he is a prisoner. He is a, a, a killing machine. The, the funny thing is, that all most of the other characters are also on this ship. They have issues of their own. So in some ways, it's kind of a unique take on who people really are, what they're hiding from each other. You know, in the end, the, the, the argument could be made that you know, Vin Diesel's character and the monsters on the planet are the most honest beings on the planet because... They don't hide their monstrous side. Um, but cool stuff. Anyway, next one. Identity. Wonderful film. When this came out, it just kind of exploded. Um, there are two separate plots. There are two separate plots going on. One involves a whole bunch of strangers who, by really bad luck, are all have to stay at a motel in the middle of nowhere in the middle of a thunderstorm. Prince, the big name characters, um, um, let's see, we got Amanda Peet, we've got Ray Liotta, and we've got John Cusack. Um, and in typical horror movie fashion, one by one, they're getting slaughtered in pretty nasty ways, and they're trying to figure out why. In the meantime, at the meantime, simultaneously, there is a hearing going on in a mental asylum where, um, uh, where, um, oh gosh, a, um, a therapist, um, is trying to keep his patient from being, from being, from being executed and take, and transported to a, a, um, a, um, a, 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 a mental hospital because he has multiple personalities, like I think nine of them, all raging ages, all very, very different. And you're going, what does this have to do with anything? Those of you who remember this movie going, oh, that's right. I'm not gonna say anything more. Um, this film has one of the most remarkable twists. It's along the lines of, of, M9, of, of The Sixth Sense, where you just kind of sit there and go, dang. And I'm gonna stop. It's really cool. It is really, really cool. Um, next film, very recent one, actually. And unfortunately, it didn't quite... When it first came out, eh, reaction was kind, of, was kind of shaky. Jennifer's body! Um, unfortunately, it's kind of notorious for being the film, one of the first films Megan Fox did after she basically threw a grenade on her career. Um, talking smack about... The Transformers films and Michael Bay, um, and it got known for being Diablo Cody's big film after Juno. And eh. the the funny thing though is, time has passed. The film has gotten to be more well known and enjoyed. I just watch this by dumb luck. Um, it was on the rotation on cable. I was catching at my uh, catching at my at my girlfriend's place, um, Tracy's place. Um, you know, off and on. You know, it was like watching Shawshank Redemption, you know, getting chunks of it here and there, and going, 
This is kind of cool. Um, Amanda Siegfried and Megan Fox. High school friends, yin, yin, yang. Megan, surprise, surprise, is the hottie one. Um, and <laughs> Amanda, the best friend, the one who tends to kind of stay in the shadows. Go to a bar. Things go wrong. And Megan Fox gets kidnapped and gets involved in a demonic ritual. And all of a sudden, she changes. Um, it, it, it's, it's a fun movie. It's classic Diablo Cody dialogue and a huge cast. J.K. Simmons is in this as one of the teachers. He's hysterical as heck. Um, the way... You get to see, you know, it, it, it's got that, it's got that Buffy, that Buffy or Brick vibe to it of, you know, kind of, or um, John Hughes feel to it, where you get to kind of revisit high school, not in, in this rose colored glasses way, but there's a little nostalgia there, but there's also, you get to see these characters as wonderful three dimensional people. Um... <laughs> Gets a little gory, not not horrifically so, but eh. um, it's a wonderful, fun film. Definitely worth checking out. And last but not least, this just came out this year. Bright Burn, um, produced by James Gunn. Um, you know, the, the classic superhero trope is you get found by this family. They teach you to be human. Warm and fuzzy feeling, blah, 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 blah. This movie is a reminder that, you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't work that way. Um, it's very Superman-esque. They do find the ship. They do adopt the kid. Um, except that in the turn of events, the fan... <laughs> things start to go wrong. Um, one of the heartbreaking things about the film, actually, that really kind of gets you is that they are a loving family. The extended family, you know, the, the siblings, everyone are really trying, you know, to, to create a wonderful environment for this kid. It's just that things start to go wrong. Um, the voices in... You know how in Superman, you know, the, that moment where he has to decide, am I here to conquer, blah, 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 blah. And you know, the, the level of, you are here to rule the lesser humans, you know, has varying levels of, you know, trying to help humans or kind of take over. This is take over! <laughs> um, it is a nightmarish film. As you see the kids start to lose control. And, I mean, seriously, this is Superman meets Damien Omen from, I mean, seriously. As he learns more and more, as his powers really begin to develop, and he starts to turn into a full-blown psychopath. Um, it is a freaky... It can get really kind of gross and gory. Um, there are a couple moments. One with a car, truck accident. One with... You'll never look at... You will never, ever look at a fluorescent light bulb the same way again. Trust me. Um, but it, the film itself is very nightmarish. Um, the... the Yes, it's tropey, um, but it, it's fun to see the new twists that are done to the trope with all those tropes. Um, so there you go. Got a bunch of handful of films that are kind of fun stuff to, <laughs> depending on how you want to look at it, either fun or will scare the living crap out of you. So, hey, there you go. Um, hey, hope uh, you guys have a good rest of the weekend. Have a fun, very safe Samhain and, Hall and um, All Hallows' Eve. Uh, may the force be with you. May the odds be in your favor. And as always, be good to each other, okay, peeps? Bye.